So in class we learned about the invariance property of the maximum likelihood estimator, which is a really important property in applications. And so the invariance property basically says that um, if you want the maximum likelihood fun uh, estimator of a function of your original parameter, well, you can just take that function of the maximum likelihood estimator of the original parameter. And that makes life easy, because once you find the MLE for the original parameter, and you want to find the MLE of a function of the original parameter, you just take that function, which is, is known and you know, relatively easy to compute. So the goal of this exercise is to uh, think about that for an exponential distribution. So we've got an IID sample from an exponential with a function of the rate parameter lambda, namely lambda squared. So we found that the MLE of the rate parameter uh, is 1 over x bar. So that means that if we wanted the MLE of this function of the rate parameter, uh, the invariance property says that we can take the function of the MLE, and that would be 1 over x bar squared. So the goal of, of this exercise is to compare actually finding the MLE of lambda squared using the procedure of maximizing the likelihood function and then compare that to this here. So basically it's just a, a particular case that we'll look at and show that the theorem works for this particular case. And of course in class we proved it for every case, but it's always a good idea to go through you know, one or two specific cases. So in order to do maximum likelihood estimation, you know, we start with the marginal PDF. And uh, we want the marginal PDF actually of tau of lambda. And for shorthand, we'll call that tau. And so if tau of lambda is equal to lambda squared, that implies that lambda is equal to the square root of tau. And thus, the marginal PDF with respect to tau, so the PDF with respect to tau will just be equal to the square root of tau um, times e raised to the negative square root of tau times x. And of course, our indicator for the exponential is over 0 to infinity. So all that we did there was um, basically we know the PDF for the exponential. It would be lambda times e to the negative lambda x. And we know that lambda is equal to the square root of tau based on the functional relationship that we are originally given. So we've got the marginal. Now what about the joint, joint PDF? Well, the joint PDF, in this case, because of independence, we can multiply the marginals together, where we plug in an xi into each one of the marginals. And so basically, we're multiplying um, n of these terms together, and we're multiplying n of these terms together, each one with an xi. And so we'll have a sum in the exponent. So the joint PDF, written as a function of tau, will be, we could write this as tau to the n over 2. That takes, qu takes care of the um, multiplication of n terms and the square root. And then we'll have e raised to the negative square root of tau times the sum of the xi's. And then we should have a product of indicator functions. And of course, since our likelihood function only needs to be proportional to the joint PDF, we can always drop that product of indicators once we move to the likelihood function. So the likelihood function, it will be a function of tau, and it's just tau to the n over 2 times e to the negative 
square root of tau, and I'll write the sum of the xi's as n times x bar. And again, this entire product here is not a function of tau, and so the likelihood function only needs to be proportional to the joint PDF, and so we can drop off this constant. Now we typically maximize the log of the likelihood function, so script L of tau. The log of the likelihood function should be n over 2 uh, times the log of tau, and then plus, so the log of e raised to something will just be that uh, thing in the exponent, and that thing in the exponent is negative, so we'll have a negative square root of tau times n times x bar. So at this point we're ready to find the maximum likelihood estimator. And of course the way that we do that is by maximizing the likelihood function, which is equivalent to maximizing the log likelihood function. So we could take the derivative of the log likelihood uh, with respect to tau, and then uh, set that derivative equal to zero and solve for tau. So the derivative of the log likelihood with respect to tau, uh, for the first term, we'll have n over 2 times tau. Um, and then in the second term, we'll have uh, minus 1 half times tau to the negative 1 half, and then times n times x bar. So this we set equal to 0, and we solve, uh, in this case, for tau. Right, so we've got to figure out how to get tau alone. I think if we multiply, um, well first let's, uh, let's swing over that negative 1 half tau to the negative 1 half n times x bar term. So we'll have n over uh, 2 tau is equal to tau to the negative 1 half. Um, oops, we got a 1 half here, and then times n times x bar. And then, you know, I think we can uh, let the 2's cancel, the n's cancel, and so we just have 1 over tau times tau to the negative 1 half times x bar. So here we should uh, multiply by tau on both sides of the equation, and that will leave us with uh, 1 is equal to tau to the 1 half uh, times x bar. And then uh, if we divide by tau to the 1 half, we'll have 1 over tau to the 1 half is equal to x bar, which implies that tau to the 1 half is equal to 1 over x bar, and that finally implies that tau is equal to 1 over x bar squared, and that's the maximum likelihood estimator of tau. So this was the long way of going about this problem, right? The long way was to actually find the MLE by reparameterizing uh, the PDF and thus the likelihood. So we did it the long way, and what we just did is we showed that we get 1 over x bar squared, where, of course, theta is equal to lambda. Now, if if we did it the short way using the invariance property, this function is lambda squared. Right, that's, that's the way we've defined the function. And this would mean we just take tau and we plug in the MLE of lambda, which is 1 over x bar. And of course, we're just squaring whatever we plug into the function. That's how we define the function. And we should get 1 over x bar squared. So. Uh, you know, the, really the, the goal that I hope we've achieved in this video is to show if you do it the long way, this would be, you know, the MLE of tau. 
but the short way gives you exactly the same thing, right? And we proved the theorem in class, and this was just meant to be an example.